whether all fishermen, without knowing it, talk to their fish. When with a companion, they seem, in talking to him, to find relief from an excitement which must otherwise come out in monologue. A gilly I know says that all the men he's carried a gaff for all swear when they have a fish on, with the exception of two parsons. One grunts, and the other talks much in such a way that if you didn't know him, you'd think he was using bad language. I have heard a small boy abjuring his float to bob your brute. And a small girl, who did not like taking fish off the hooks, apologizing to a perch for snatching away the bait which he was visibly on the point of taking. Pike, on the other hand, certainly are seldom caught in silence. The language used to them is not polite. They look for hostility and are met with it. Many an angler more than half believes he has heard them answer back. When a pike comes up out of the water, opens his great white mouth and shakes his head, it's hard to believe that he doesn't actually bark. In the spirit of inquiry, I tried for some time to catch myself in the act of talking to fish, but with no success, until a happy chance occurred when I was fishing the tweed. A month or two ago, I was fortunate enough to overhear almost the whole of the catching of a salmon. I was having my sandwiches behind a rock when a salmon fisher, who didn't know I was there, came to the head of the pool. There was no one else in sight, and I was startled to hear him speak, and not at all below his breath. Come on, Mr. Salmon, I know you're there, I know you're there. Come on, fish, that's a beautiful fly that's there. Take a hold of it. He settled into a steady rhythm of casting and confabulation. Come on, come on, that's it. Too bright today, fish. Too bright today. Her approach to the skies brought a welcome cover of cloud. Was he chanting a spell or incantation over a particular fish? Or was he addressing every fish, or the fish that he determined to be in that particular lie? Come on, now, this is just about to take me. But at last, a salmon replied. Oh, that's a good right this time. Come on, now, take a right hand. The tweedsman tightened and took in line as the salmon ran towards him. Then, with the fish firmly on, he clambered out of the river. His rod bent and his reel screamed as the salmon turned downstream, and the fisherman made off down the bank in pursuit. Would you? I heard him ejaculate defiantly, evidently attributing to the fish responsibility for an awkward stumble. He was trying to get below his fish, and I could see from his lips he was still talking, though I could not hear anything from the stream. 
Keeping well away from the river, I went down and took up a position not too far from the fisherman. Well enough out of his way to avoid impediment, near enough to sense that his voice was becoming occasionally querulous. Can't get near him. Come on, come on. I suppose he must have heard the noise of my arrival as he looked for half a second in my direction. But he was far too engrossed in his contest with the fish not to forget my presence instantly. Come over there. It was soon evident that he had hooked a fish determined to ignore every plea and instruction. No, it would not sap its strength against the current, thank you all the same, but preferred to drop downstream. And the fisherman could follow if he had the legs. Come on, fish. He's a dude's devil, this. Come on, it's a bit time you were coming out of here, fish. They travelled about a quarter of a mile. Sweet words from the fisherman failed to persuade the insolent salmon to surrender himself alongside a favourite gravel beaching spot. Come on, now. The words now spoke of anxiety. He seemed to realise that his fish had both will and mind of its own and planned yet to escape him. So startling was this realisation that he scarcely had time to contemplate the annoyance of a pheasant disturbed by his passing. Oops. Fin for her feather. There's no going away down here, there's no agreeable bar. Very come on, eh? But as he climbed down into the river, I was aching in leg and lung and took the chance to lie on the bank and rest. Few things are more astonishing than the gymnastics of which even an elderly man finds himself capable when he has a fish on the end of his line. Blood in your the fisherman went downstream like a boy and with the fish still on, was moving steadily down the pool. I had no fish to lend wings to my feet and it took me a minute or two before I could again catch up with him. I found the conversation still proceeding, though its tone was now much less friendly. Come on now, for Christ's sake, get in the bloody sight. Come on, fish, come out of there. We're gonna do with you. <laughs> bloody well lose me. That's what will happen. That's me, that's me. Here's me away in mine. I said, what's that, eh? Come on, bloody fishing. There's not a bit of gravel here with you. The conclusion was still uncertain, and I was wondering whether to run back to get the net or the tailor when we were joined by another fisherman who had come up river to see the sport. Into the water, and I'll let the fish tee. Now he's got a wee bit of fight left in him yet, you see. I trembled to think how easily the fish might yet make off. And for these final anxious moments, the worthy man was spoken to in words no more gracious than those previously addressed to the fish. Put your other hand under it and support it. Good lad. I just left it later. Well done. Well done. Okay. Lovely, thank you very much. Okay. okay. Hot and rather breathless, he held up his fish and acknowledged my presence for the first time. Not a bad fish. About 12 pounds, I would think. A little black and orange tube fly. Quite fresh run, he's been in the river about two to three weeks, I would think, at the most. Quite a lot of fighting them. He's a heavy fish, a male fish. He spoke in quiet appraisement. I'm sure if I'd told him that he'd been talking to that fish for the last ten minutes, he wouldn't have believed me. I wonder, is it so with all of us? And so wrote Arthur Ransom in his essay, 
on talking to the fish. He was one never guilty of gilding the lily, as we are about to in this film. Our only excuse is that it happened. Having decided to pack up for the day, I thought I'd have one last cast, the one, as they say, that catches the fish. It did. Christ, your man. Was I now talking to the fish? Oh! The fury. That's it. Not very well hooked. He's, in the, he's hooked right in the front of his mouth. Not the easiest back to uh, beach him. Right. Thank you. And there, to land my fish, was our bablative friend now quietly helping me over my excitement and still unaware of his long conversation with the sound, perhaps condescending to my expostulation. Hey, 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 safely away from the river. <sighs> there we are, and he's off the hook. So I was lucky. Just as well he wasn't any smaller. A bit larger, I mean. I was just thinking I was too tired to go on fishing any longer. Not a bad fish. Eight or nine pounds. <laughs> he spoke with quiet appraisement. <laughs> I want to be drowned now. Who's to celebrate?